Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isveron, and with me today is Dr. Kip Thomas, Director of the Master of Sciences in Healthcare Emergency Management Program at Boston University. Welcome, Kip. Oh, thank you, Heather. It's great to be here, and I'm really excited about being invited to be part of the UAPI program, the University Par Partnership Initiative. Well, you have such a wide variety of experience, everything from your doctorate in public policy to creating research programs in critical infrastructure at George Mason to also serving for the Secretary of the Navy. Can you tell us about your program at Boston University? What is it? Absolutely. Uh, it, well, it's a new discipline. It's in healthcare emergency management, which is relatively new. Um, I guess in 2004, some of the uh, communities that are part of the first response community realized that it was necessary to more professionalize the emergency support function for ESF-8, which is the public uh, health response component. So our program actually does that, and it also recognizes that you need to bring together professionals across the disciplines, medical doctors, nurses, firefighters, police officers, risk communicators, to understand what each of the other uh, groups do in a response process, but then also help to guide and shape the process of disaster medicine and public health preparedness. It's very interesting because public health traditionally has had a um, hard time getting to the homeland security table. Can you tell me about how you incorporate homeland security issues into your program? Absolutely. So, so emergency support function eight is under the national response framework, uh, which is the homeland security process. So Homeland Security is actually the overarching process for all of these groups to come together, the critical infrastructures, the preparedness components, the response recovery and mitigation components, and the healthcare piece of it is a piece of that. It's just that it's important to remember if a, if a bomb goes off or a hurricane happens in the middle of nowhere, it's not a disaster. If people are involved or they're there, it's a disaster. And Inevitably, that's going to involve healthcare outcomes so, or medical outcomes. So it's really important for the different groups to understand what those medical outcomes are and to be prepared for them. But it is clearly an element of Homeland Security. And tell me what your classroom looks like. What is the typical profile of a student and maybe a day in the class? Sure. Or in the program? Sure. Um, our students are normally um, around 30, um, but they range from 24 up to 60. Um, they're... Um, about 25% are MDs, uh, about uh, the rest smattering, uh, rest of the groups range from the firefighters, police officers, nurses, and then general people that are interested in the topic and public health professionals. But we put that in every class so that there is the opportunity for you to interact with each of those groups. The classroom itself is a virtual classroom. So it's not your traditional sit in a brick and mortar uh, space. While we do have one classroom where you can do that, most people come in into the virtual teleconference that each class has at a synchronous time and conduct a normal classroom experience that way. And it's really actually uh, somewhat more vibrant than uh, a face-to-face -face classroom experience because you see everybody's faces on the computer screen in front of you and you really are, are very close and personal with each person. What they're doing is they're, uh, we're talking about the range of topics from what are the actual outcomes, uh, physical, based outcomes from different types of disasters. How does that relate to medical components? What are the ethics of those? As well as um, the, the command and control structures. So that's the incident command process and how that might be fracturing in different groups. And then um, the life cycle of disaster. But of course, I think an underpinning of all of what we do is understanding things from a systems dynamic viewpoint, which I am so glad that you do here at uh, the NPS programs is in the uh, Center for Homeland Defense and Security in the complex adaptive systems process and the emergence concerns. I, I think it very much relates to each other and is complementary. However, I have to give a nod to NPS because you are the government source and I really hope that you continue to be that source and give us guidance on what's the best way to move forward. So getting back to the complex adaptive uh, systems that you mentioned, you know, in sciences, it's, it's really, you know, very list-based and very protocol-oriented. So how do you teach that to these very scientific types? Yeah, it, um, they're, as you're right, they're very much under a protocol. And I'm an old submariner, and, you know, nuclear submariners are really good about following a list, and they'll do exactly what's on the list, but they won't think outside the box. So it's really important for us to teach them how a system of something exists. What is the background space of that particular system? 
what are the elements of that system and how do the rules and relationships of those systems uh, come together. So that's sort of an undertone or a current that we put through all of our coursework so that we can get critical thinkers in the end. And it's, it is a challenge. Um, we put five full hours of the program devoted to teaching the actual uh, mechanics of that and we make every student come out of the program a systems dynamic modeler, not an expert, but a modeler. That's terrific. And so you've been in our classroom this week with about 25 other professional educators learning about different methods of instruction, different types of curriculum. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience and what, what has been the benefit for you? Uh, I, I, well, first I want to give a nod to you and to Stan Supinski. Uh, for the, the numbers and types of people you brought to this group. Again, thank you for letting me be part of the group, but the group is a really dynamic uh, set of people that have great experiences and are shaping this, this community as we go forward. So the interaction with them has been phenomenal. The framing of the discussions using your curriculum and your lead instructors has been well thought out and really gets us a sense of what, what the accomplishments of NPS are and it allows us to talk about what our objectives are individually and as a group. And the other thing it's been is a great networking experience. Uh, I have uh, some of the colleges and universities talking about uh, developing relationships so that their undergraduate students might take our program, but also so we can do re research together and, uh, and work on journals and, and get, th get things done. I'm really excited about it. So uh, you have this great uh, experience with all these other educators, and you have this great program back at Boston University. What is the hope for these critical thinkers, these uh, masters of science in healthcare emergency management, when they go back out into the field? Do they use technology? Do they use critical thinking? Absolutely. Um, the crit critical thinking and the, the way to think about things in a critical way as a system and the system of systems is a, is a key component of what we're trying to do in making them the new leaders uh, in this space. So they can really help define what the space is in Homeland Security and from the healthcare per perspective. With respect to technology, we, um, we have a component of our program which is in the field and we constantly try to in embed new technologies for our students to both evaluate but be ex exposed to because we realize that uh, they're going to be exposed to a ton of new technologies. Some make sense, some aren't the best, and it's really important that they learn how to, how to deal with those uh, things. From our classroom perspective, we use this virtual classroom, which, you know, I, I, it's debatable, but I think it's still true. We're the only fully virtual program in the world. We've been out to uh, Infocom uh, in Vegas, and I was a keynote speaker there to talk about this. And I'm not saying ours is the best. I'm sure there are ways to improve it. And, I, and if anybody's listening to this or, or has an idea, please let me know. But uh, we, uh, we use uh, Mega Meeting, which is a great tool, but IT is just a tool. So I think our real goal is to make sure that technology is viewed as a component of the process of how we would deliver and perform our duties. And we should adopt them and take them on if they make sense, um, but we should be critical about them and recognize that they're only a tool. Great. Well, Kip, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for coming to Monterey. Thank you very much.